Welcome back to A Kentucky. We are very happy to be joined by my good friend, at least I like to say that, from the SEC Network and ESPN, Laura Rutledge. Laura, great to see you. It's great to see you, and I'm honored to be called your good friend. Uh, thank I thank you very that. much. You know, you the people need to know this. Laura's a big star, but she has hosted KSR. She's one of the nicest people in the business, so everybody <laughs> should know that. Now, you got a back-to-back -back weekend of Kentucky sports sadness. You were here on the Saturday we lost to Georgia, and then the Tuesday against Duke. Let's start with the football. <laughs> Before the game on Georgia, what did you feel like was the vibe around the program, the coaches, et cetera? Oh, my goodness, Matt. I mean, it was the biggest home game in Kentucky history, and the turnout at our show, SEC Nation, was incredible. I love Kentucky fans. I'm not just saying that because I'm on your show. They are wonderful. You can see where I've said that many other places, too, and, and we just felt that. The energy was different. Uh, you could tell there was a ton of confidence amongst the players, Benny Snell, Josh Allen. We talked to him the day before the game, and you know, unfortunately, just didn't work out the way that they wanted it to. But I do think that what you saw that weekend and even, you know, as things haven't gone the way they wanted it to the last couple of weeks, but you did see why it made sense to trust in Mark Stoops and why this Kentucky administration made the right decision to keep him around. He's so impressive to me what he's done. Uh, you know, I know there are people that may criticize him a little bit, but I think he's done an excellent job. And I think a lot of these guys, no matter how the season ends up, it still has a chance to be a nine-win season. But a lot of these guys have a lot to be proud of. You travel over the SEC. Do you think the facilities, the environment, everything at Kentucky is of the level that they could succeed consistently at the top of the SEC? Absolutely. And, I mean, look, it's pretty common knowledge that there are other schools who are using Kentucky's model for their – renovations for their facilities and some of them of course being built from the ground up as a model for what they're going to do because they're that good. I mean, you come into that football facility and it's really impressive. Everything from the smoothie bar to the weight room that opens right up on the, the field that's outdoors. And then, of course, you've got the indoor that they're going to even, I think, do more renovations to. It, it's an impressive showing. The locker room's beautiful. They are stacked up the way that they need to be to compete well against these other teams in the SEC from a recruiting standpoint. And at the end of the day, it's like, that's what's going to end up battering a lot. Uh, well, these kids want to come in and say, okay, this looks like an NFL caliber facility. I mean, heck, I think there are probably some NFL teams that don't have facilities as nice ex as Kentucky. So, yes, they. I see all these other schools. I even see a lot of them outside of the SEC, and Kentucky's is right there where it needs to be, which is really good to see. Let's switch gears to basketball for a second. You were there on the Tuesday in Chicago when the – excuse me, in Indy, when the Cats looked awful against Duke. After the game, it was shell shock for the fans. Did you get a sense it was a shell shock for the coaches and the U.K. players? I, I felt shell shocked myself, Matt. I mean, I, I was sitting there. I was talking to Kentucky fans before the game. I'm like, yeah, I think they can win this one. You know, we knew that Zion and R.J. Barrett and all these guys – we're going to be so good for Duke, but I just felt like Kentucky was in a different scenario than they've been in the last few years and even in many other times in Cal's tenure because he's got the three guys returning and having three sophomores with experience and you know knowing what they've become as basketball players and even as young men, I, I felt really confident. So I was shell-shocked, and I think there was a little bit of a shock you know, just amongst uh, the guys in game. But the one thing that's so great about Coach Cal is that he just sort of turns the page and he says, all right, okay, so this happened. And, and it could have ended up being best case scenario. Obviously, they've looked a little better uh, recently against much lesser competition. But still, you know, you can see them kind of finding their way a little bit. I, I just think it could have been it could have been a positive, And I hate to be, you know, like ridiculously positive over here. But it could have been a positive in the sense that whatever confidence they were having, you know, might have been knocked down a little bit. And now they know a little bit more about who they are and how to get better, how to get to where they need to get. So they're still going to be a very talented team. And we all walked away thinking that it was just that Duke on that day had already peaked quicker, I believe, uh, than Kentucky had. Laura Rutledge, I know we're going to see you in Lexington, I would assume, for a lot of college basketball games. Next time you come, you're going to visit the restaurant, right? It's, we got to give you the tour wait. we gave Paul. How's that? <laughs> Yes, you know, I didn't get the invite last time, and I get it, because Paul Feinbaum's way cooler than me, but no, I, he's not. I would be honored to come out and check the rest Well, of next out. time, you're getting the invite, and we'll bring security <laughs> since you're such a star. Thank you very much for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.